Welcome to this uh, module related to the cause consequence analysis and layer of protection analysis sometimes abbreviated as uh, LOPA. Now just uh, we, uh, we would like to have a brief outlook uh, that what we had studied previously because this particular module is linked with uh, the previous module. So we had an introduction about the fault tree analysis and during this uh, analysis uh, we have gone through the origin we had uh, a very good understanding of uh, the model of this fault tree analysis. Uh, we were uh, well acquainted with the basic definition and history of uh, this fault tree analysis. Then uh, we had a brief discussion about that why there is a need to perform fault tree analysis and apart from this we had a discussion about the various building blocks of fault tree analysis and the basic methodology through which we can perform the fault tree analysis. Apart from this, we had a discussion about the advantage and disadvantage or sometimes referred as a limitation of this fault tree analysis. Now, in this uh, particular module, we are going to study about the, the cause consequence analysis. We will have an introduction about uh, the layer of protection analysis LOPA, which is very significant nowadays. Uh, we will have a discussion about the independent protection layer sometimes referred as IPL and its classification. We will have a discussion about the use of uh, uh, LOPA that is a layer of protection analysis. Then discussion about uh, the steps involved in LOPA. We will have a discussion about the initiating event frequency because uh, it is very crucial while we are discussing ETA that is event tree analysis or a fault tree analysis. Then we will have a, a brief outlook about the probability of the um, uh, failure on demand PFD. Uh, fail safe uh, position will be discussed uh, in the later part of this module and the periodic reliability testing. Apart from this we will have a discussion about the operation modes and limitation. So let us start with the, the cause consequence analysis. Now this cause consequence analysis is uh, usually a modified form of fault tree analysis now which uh, utilizes some of the features of uh, event tree analysis. So you can say that this is an augmentation of the salient feature of both event tree analysis and the fault tree analysis. Now this postulate an initiating event as far as uh, um, the event tree analysis is concerned and uh, develop an event tree diagram and this uh, simultaneously this develops the fault tree for all accident identified in the event tree diagram. So you can say that this is the modified uh, version of uh, this ETA and fault tree analysis. Now the process uh, mm, this can be reversed in that a top event is uh, defined the fault tree and then developed therefore the for each safety function in the fault tree an event T is developed. There are some special symbols we will use uh, like uh, hexagonal symbol for denoting the consequences and the crescent sign for denoting the branch point which is uh, which will be used in this particular methodology. Now rest of the part we have already discussed in event tree analysis and the fault tree analysis. So let us have an introduction about uh, these uh, things. So uh, while performing any kind of HAZOP analysis, uh, various possible process uh, deviation and their probable consequences of uh, potential accident is assessed. Now based on your previous knowledge, uh, this assessment is carried out. Now after determining this event tree analysis and a fault tree analysis, the possible safeguards are identified to mitigate the risk because ultimately the mitigation of the risk is our prime motto. So a list of all supporting safeguards need to be created to understand whether it provides a complete or a partial mitigation to the process risk. So in case if provide the complete then it is of very good use and if provides the partial mitigation then again we need to go for uh, to take the further steps. So some of the listed safeguards may depend over other safeguards and some may be independent from one another. Now the team which who is carrying out all these aspects, the team observing a particular safeguard may also misinterpret its integrity with other 
because sometimes the system may say that this is a foreign body. So, uh, they may not be in the system may not be in a position to interpret properly uh, that particular safeguard tool. So, that is why it may misinterpret its integrity and its impact towards the risk reduction. So, there is always a chance of either underestimation or overestimation of required safeguard for the successful mitigation of the process risk. So, both the conditions uh, either underestimation or overestimation is always undesirable. So, you must have a proper optimization. So, these problems may arise the requirement of an independent assessment of the safeguard to ensure the adequate risk reduction. So, let us have a uh, uh, some of the definition related to this particular aspect. The layer protection analysis LOPA is a study conducted on the basis of risk identification analysis such as uh, HESOP to assess the adequate safeguard required to address the particular risk. So, nowadays it is an upcoming field. So, therefore, because it gives you an, uh, an optimized level of uh, uh, safeguard tools. So, it is defined as a function of frequency and the potential consequence severity. So, it is used to understand how a process deviation can lead to a hazardous consequence and uh, if not interpret, uh, interrupted by the successful operation of a safeguard and sometimes this particular aspect is referred as independent protection layer or IPL. So, it is to be noted that these countermeasures like IPL as per the name suggests must be independent to each other to be very effective. Now, this is a semi quantitative approach which generally applied to the system and their protective safeguard which is already in place. So, the term semi quantitative this represents that LOPA utilizes both qualitative that is characterized by the methods such as HESOP and what if analysis or as well as the quantitative usually they are characterized by the method such as event tree analysis and uh, fault tree analysis. So, uh, the quantitative approach to decide the adequacy of existing or proposed system. Now, remember the LOPA does not suggest which additional safeguards are required, but it assures that the potential risk to the process system is successfully mitigated to an acceptable limit. Now, this LOPA is limited to a single cause consequence pair as a scenario. So, let us have a look about uh, the independent protection layer that is uh, referred as IPL. Now, this independent protection layer IPL, they are intrinsic safety system as an independent series of element, they, those are related to the process design and maintenance. So, let us have a look about the salient features of this independent protection layer. Uh, first thing is the criteria. Now, this uh, is having the very specific aspect. It is independence, dependability and auditability. Now, uh, there are three D's which we need to remember detect, decide and deflect. Similarly, we, we are having three E's that is referred as fast enough, strong enough and big enough. So, enough is there. Then there is one big I that is independent. So, all IPLs they are safeguards, but not all safeguards are IPL. So, yeah, this thing this thing must be remembered in all the aspects. Now, let us have a look about the classification of uh, IPLs. Uh, basically, there are two uh, ways to classify it. One is on the basis of uh, the passive and active approach. So, the passive IPLs like dike, underground drainage system, open vent, then there is no valve, etcetera, fireproofing, blast wall or bunker, inherently safe design, flame or detonation arresters, etcetera, and then active IPLs, they are having uh, relief walls, rupture disc, basic 
process control systems, safety valves, etc., then interlocks. There may are certain sensors like instruments, mechanical, maybe or human, then decision making process with the help of logic solver, relay, sometimes human, etc. Then various actions like instruments may be attributed to the mechanical or human aspects, etc. Now, let us discuss about the use of LOPA. So, LOPA is used all around the process life, life cycle. This includes the research, the process development because sometimes research may lead for the process development. Then uh, after process development, the process design took place. So, so, process design, then operator and maintenance modification schemes and then decommissioning. So, it covers the entire process life cycle. This provides guidelines uh, in process design. It also decides the safety, uh, uh, the critical aspect of various safety measures. It identifies the operator action and responses. So, LOPA is uh, typically applied after a, a qualitative hazard analysis has been completed. Now, it is a cost effective that LOPA is used during uh, or after the HAZOP review or revalidation. So, you can cut down the cost, the entire uh, designing or process life cycle cost. There are various tasks associated with the LOPA. One foremost ta task is three Qs. Uh, what are those? The Qs, one first question is that how safe is safe enough? Then second cue is that how many protection layers are needed because ultimately it decides the cost. Then third cue is that how much risk reduction should each layer provide. So, the providing rational uh, semi quantitative risk based answers and sometimes another task is the to reducing the emotionalism and provide the clarity and consistency. And sometimes the major task of LOPA is the documenting the basis of decision because sometimes it may be referred for the future study or future consequence analysis. Now, there are various steps associated with the LOPA process. We have enlisted all those process. The step 1 that need to identify the consequence to screen the scenario because there may be several consequences, then you need to shortlist or screen the scenario. Then the step 2 that is the select you uh, select an accident scenario. So, you will have a different scenarios, then you need to pick the accident scenario because there may be certain process related scenarios, there may be certain safety related scenarios, there may be certain environmental related scenario. So, you need to select an uh, uh, accident scenario. Then the third step is to identify the initiating event and determine the initiating event frequency. So, that uh, you can properly design this particular process a priori. Then step 4 that is you need to identify the IPLs and estimate the PFD of each IPL. So, that you can narrow down or zero down the process. Then step 5 that you estimate the risk and step 6 is that you evaluate on the basis of your estimation you evaluate the risk. Now, there are benefits of uh, LOPA, this uh, um, uh, these uh, benefits are enlisted in this uh, slide. This LOPA takes less time than the quantitative risk analysis. The reason is that you have already shortlisted the various scenarios. So, the time devoted to those unnecessary scenario is less or curtailed compared to the uh, quantitative risk analysis. Now, this LOPA provides a better risk decision basis because you have already zeroed down your screening process. Now, LOPA is more defensible for more rigorous documentation and a specific value than qualitative methods. Now, this LOPA identifies the operation and practices. So, it is more practical compared to the other tools available. Now, let us have a discussion about the layer of protection by CCPS AI um, CHE. Now, the CCPS stands for chemical process safety and it is uh, a branch of American chemical, uh, American Institute of Chemical Engineers. This is the foremost body of uh, um, uh, chemical engineers uh, across globe. 
So, you can have a loop that there is a hazard present over here, then you need to take the process decision, then there are certain basic controls, process alarms and operator supervision. Then the critical alarms and operators, there is supervision and manual intervention, this is the uh, another layer. Then uh, the automatic uh, actions uh, or SIS or for various uh, system, then the physical protection or the relief devices. So, these are the preventive safeguards. So, once they fail, then the physical protection like dikes, etcetera, and the plant emergency responders, so they are the mitigative safeguards so that it cannot propagate further. Now, in this figure, the safety protection is uh, broken by se uh, several uh, layers. The layer 1, this, one, uh, this, this particular layer is uh, the process design. Then we have discussed the basic control process alarms, etcetera. So, you can see that there are different layers. Now, on the basis of uh, th these uh, uh, different layers, you can respond uh, to various accidents if any take place. So, it is to be noted that these layers describe not the exhaustive layers of protection and not to consider as a complete one because some unforeseen circumstances may take place. So, the development of uh, uh, layer of protection depends upon the type of case. Additionally, no layer can be set perfectly effective and additional uh, layer must be provided to perfectly mitigate the risk. So, let us have a look about the frequency of consequences that is sometimes referred as FIC. This can be calculated through the frequency of uh, initiating event that is IFI and probability of the failure on demand of uh, IPL that is uh, um, PFD IJ, there are two events. So, so this can be calculated through this uh, particular mathematical relation that is F i is equal to i e f i into p f d s i g. Now, this represents the product of all p f d s. Now, let us have a look about the initiating event uh, frequency i e f. So, in the previous module, we have discussed about uh, various initiating event in failure. So, that leads to start the event. So, IEF that is initiating uh, event frequency, this represents the frequency of occurrence of such event in a particular interval of time, typically you can say the per, per year. Now, this uh, failure includes various kind of uh, mechanical failures, sometimes uh, error attributed to the operator, sometimes uh, maybe because of some bug, etcetera, the software error sometimes uh, any kind of electronic instrument or instrumentation panel may fail. So, it is attributed to electronic error. Now, the probability of a failure upon demand that is PFD, this failure on demand is a case uh, when a safety system fails to react when an initiating event happen. So, let us take an example that if a relief device is assigned to address the pressure relief in case of a reaction run away. Uh, and if runaway occurs, then it is considered as a demand. The reason is that without this pressure relief uh, system, you cannot control the process. So, in a testing experiment, a relief device or uh, through previous uh, say plant history, now if it is observed that the relief device opens in 98 times out of 100 demand, then the PFD will be calculated as 100 minus 98 because this, this 100 is uh, the demand and 98 is the success. So, it is 0 0.02. So, the PFD would be 0 0.02. Now, there is uh, a fail safe position. So, let us consider a case of uh, electricity failure in the plant. So, what will happen if uh, the safety layer design depend upon this electricity? and definitely it would not be in a position to work. So, it may also be possible that more than one safety layer, layer which we have already discussed uh, depends on the electricity. In this particular case, both of the layer will not be considered as independent as they depend upon one cause. So, this type of situation leads the safety engineer to evaluate the fail safe position of the control device. 
Now, the fail safe position of a safety device sometimes like example of the pressure relief wall is how it should operate when there is a loss of power or signal because there, there, there may be certain relief devices those who are actuated with the, the power or electricity and some of the safety devices they do not require any kind of uh, supply of power. So, let us case, uh, discuss the previous case. Now, the proper functioning of the safety device must be known uh, to assess this position. In this, in the case of a pressure relief device, it should be noted that majority of these devices are pneumatic. That means, it depends on the air pressure to function. So, the functioning of the relief system is already discussed, uh, we have already discussed in uh, the relief uh, segment of uh, the various modules. So, air has to be added to release uh, to function a relief device. Now, this understanding develops two extreme cases uh, for a relief device that is can be either air to close that is a fail operate open or it can be air to open fail close type of system. So, fail open it means that the wall will open during the loss of power. Now, to achieve this goal the wall should require air pressure to stay close. So, during the power loss due to the lack of uh, air pressure the wall will automatically open. So, this is the fail safe position. So, let us have an example of uh, fail open scenario. So, let us consider a case where the pressure relief device is mounted with the inlet of water line uh, of a cooling system. Now, this cooling system is provided to cool down the vessel during the reaction runaway. So, let us assume that suddenly an electricity failure occurs which led to the loss of uh, control to the pressure relief device. Now, there are two possibilities. One is that uh, runaway does not occur and second is that runaway occurs. So, uh, for case when the runaway reaction does not occur, now there will be no need of any kind of cooling system and uh, the process uh, will continue. But due to the installation of uh, uh, fail open relief device, suddenly cooling water will start flowing which leads to lower down the reaction temperature and it may interrupt to the process. So, this may lead to the loss of product quality for the batch and sometimes it may lead to the economic losses, but the good news is that no accident happens, but ultimately there is a loss in the product quality and there may be uh, a chances of uh, the process shut down. So, economic loss may occur. For the case number 2, when the runaway reaction do occur. Now, due to the installation of uh, this fail open uh, relief device, suddenly cooling water will start flowing which leads to lower down the reaction temperature inside the vessel and eliminate the chance of accident. Hence, the fail open device must be installed in such a cases. So, to better understand try to think of another example where uh, fail open device is required. Now, another thing is that the fail close, the fail open it means that the wall will close during the loss of power. Now, to achieve this goal the wall should require uh, air pressure to remain open. So, during the power loss due to the lack of air pressure the wall will automatically close. So, let us have an example of uh, um, fail close scenario. So, consider a case uh, where a control valve is installed at the inlet of the feed of uh, um, reaction vessel and a controlled supply of uh, feed is required to eliminate the chances of uh, any uh, reaction runaway. So, if power fails then due to the lack of air supply the control valve automatically close and the feed will stop entering into the reactor the product formation will gradually stop and maybe the quality will be compromised or a challenged for that particular batch, but the reaction vessel will remain safe. So, this is the plus point of this particular thing. Now, uh, uh, let us have a look about uh, that either fail open or a fail close scenario. So, let us assume that if a fail open device was installed in case of fail close. 
then during uh, the power failure the inlet will remain open and that would result to the reaction runaway and the safeguard is said to be failed. So, in other words the safeguard or fail open device for this case is called the dependent on electricity. Hence, it cannot be considered as an IPL scenario. So, uh, from the above discussed example it is uh, obvious that the safety, uh, safety instrument system that is SIS sometimes if we recall the layering of uh, AICHE diagram the layer 4 must be independent of basic control and the process alarm and the operator supervision which are clubbed in the layer 2 of that particular diagram. Now, there are uh, uh, certain things related to the periodic uh, reliability testing. So, each layer of uh, safety protection system it must be audited periodically. Now, the period of testing depend upon the type of safeguard like if big relief walls are in question then 3 to 4 year cycle. If sensor the sensor may be attributed to the fire toxicity and others may be in monthly. So, the time period of uh, the testing can be estimated through the probability of failure PFDs higher the PFD shorter the time period of the testing it requires to maintain the reliability of the IPL. So, this ultimately this is the governing factor. Now, SIS uh, operation modes uh, so the lower demand mode uh, the mode of operation where the IEF is not greater than 1 per year. So, the IPL is uh, not challenged more than once per year. Now, there is another high demand mode. Now, the mode of operation uh, where IEF is greater than 1 per year, the IPL is challenged more than once per year. There is another mode that is called the continuous mode. Now, this mode of operation where the process must be retained in a safe state as part of normal operation. So, if an IPL is working in high or a continuous mode, then efforts should be made to make improved design and maintenance such that IPLs they are able to operate in low demand. Now, there are certain limitations uh, they are attributed to uh, LOPA. Now, uh, LOPA is uh, also based on the numerical risk analysis. So, it has some limitations. Now, in order the order of magnitude risk calculation this is the first limitation the value calculated are not precise due to the cumulative effect of values after precision up to few decimal point. Now, for large number of initiating event due to the introduction of several IPLs the method is not feasible and LOPA is not suitable for common cause failure event due to the mathematical limitation. So, uh, be particular about using LOPA for various uh, scenarios. Now, LOPA is uh, the methodology for hazard evaluation and risk assessment and it lies between uh, the simple qualitative and more elaborative quantitative analysis technique. And in decision making process the LOPA helps to decide the proprietary of uh, protection layer that exist uh, or are suggested to prevent the accidents. So, ideally matches the risk decision criteria of the particular unit or a company whatever you like to say. Now, this LOPA is recognized technique that can establish a proper safety integrity between a level SIL of that particular process. So, using LOPA we need to set up proper protection layers that evaluate analysis, that evaluate, analyze and decrease the risk in chemical process. So, in this particular module we had a discussion about the cause consequences and LOPA and these are the uh, you can say the elaborative uh, work of your event tree and fault tree analysis. So, if you wish to have a further uh, discussion or further study then you can have a look of these references which are enlisted over here. Thank you very much.